What's going on everybody and welcome back to the St. Thomas Dynasty here on NCAA 14. This is John Jay Gavin on the mic and today we find ourselves on the road to play against Toledo and we as we try to find ourselves try to end this losing streak that we got going we've lost three of our last four games man it is simply not acceptable as we're trying to achieve bigger things even though we have that bull eligibility I'm trying to, you know to get us to that program record for most wins in a single season so let's see if we can you know do that here today let's see if we can get the seven wins see if we can beat toledo let's go ahead and get to this game man all right so i actually missed out on the initial recording so hopefully we can hit this stop and no we do not oh no oh no oh no oh no this is not looking good this is exactly how we do not want to start this thing out man John Leonard getting to the end zone for a touchdown from the jump. Big oof, man. Big oof. So now our offense takes the field now as we go about trying to, you know, let's get some points on the board, get some positive energy. Kyle Luck is back and nearly throws an interception from the beginning. And now, you know, we almost threw a pick as Kyle Luck makes his first start in a few weeks. It's time that we're trying to get him in rhythm, though. Let's go over to Lucas Coley, who does pick up a few yards on that one. Got 14 yards reception to work with. Definitely love to see that energy right there. As now we got a fresh set of downs. First and 10 coming up here. Luck going to throw over the middle. to Well, not over the middle, but, you know, over the right-hand side, actually, to Santiago Fallon. He picks up a few more yards. As we got this second and five coming up here. Luck. Set the throw, finding Tristan Singleton, taking us up the field for another gain of 18 yards on that one. Looking pretty good right about now, as we got another set of downs. First and 10, Coley over the right hand side, another 5 yard gain on that one, looking extremely good, a lot better. As we got this second and 5 coming up here now, Lug's going to drop back the pass, he's going to find Adrian Allen right before going out of bounds. As we'll uh, go ahead and get into the no huddle real quick so that they don't notice it. They look pretty suspicious as Jamie Smith does get hit and drops a pass. So now we go for third and 12. Let's see what we can do here as they cover the screen. But not Adrian Allen as he's able to get down quickly. A 16-yard gain on that one. And it gives us a fresh set of downs once again. Nice mature play by Kyle Luck to extend the play some more. As now we have an opportunity to tie this game up. We got first and goal. Give it to Lucas Coley who gets into the end zone. In the end zone. Touchdown Tommies. And thanks to Lucas Coley we tie this thing right back up at 7. But our steam is starting to play significantly better as we actually do force a free and out on the very next possession so now we find our Tommy's back on the field again trying to get to Andrew Green on the first play of our next drive but it's broken up by number 55 of Toledo and now we got a second and ten to work with trying to get to Singleton who does make the catch looks like he's barely inbounds but just be safe we'll call no huddle so that they don't have time to challenge it and it actually turns pretty well for us too Lucas Coley picks up the first and now they can't challenge the catch so now here we go, first and 10 coming up for us here, man, as Luck is going to be set to throw. Trying to throw to Andrew Green once again, but again, this Toledo defense is, you know, doing its best to make sure that Andrew Green doesn't get the ball too terribly much. As now we got a third and eight now, we got to make a play happen here, and we decide to throw short, thrown way too late, and that's how our drive's going to end. So a lot of work that needs to be done, but a decent start for us so far. Toledo does have the ball once again. Let's see what they do with it. They're going to give it off to their running back. Looks like Demarcus Gibbons is there to take the rock. Gets up 12 yards on that one. As now Toledo's marching down the field. This time it's their quarterback Hill moving up field. Joseph Hill now at the Toledo logo all of a sudden. An 8-yard gain on that play. As we move forward, second and short. Going over to the left-hand side. Trying to make the tackle, but looks like, uh, I think that was Jared Odom. No, it wasn't Jared Odom. Uh, yeah, it was Jared Odom, actually, that uh, made the play. But, you know, it was taken for a little bit of a ride. So, you know, a lot of yards that were gained. 
when it should have when we had him at the first down marker. So now a couple plays later, we got a second and seven coming up here. Going to try to throw it to the right hand side. It's Tony Moore. As that is how this first quarter is going to end, man. Tied up at seven apiece. But Toledo looks like they're looking to take the lead right back. As we'll go ahead. Third and 16 now. Nothing could possibly go wrong here. They run the screen. Brown can't make the tackle initially, but does catch up from behind and is able to make them settle for a field goal on that possession. So out comes St. Thomas's offense as we find ourselves down 10 to 7. Kyle was set back to drop in the shotgun, who throws a quick pass over to Andrew Green on the run and is able to grab 14 yards on that one. Second catch of the day. They have contained him pretty well. But we do get him into open space that time around. Was able to make a play. And speaking of plays, there's Lucas Coley moving upfield. He could have gotten so much more, but our offensive lineman got in the way. I really hate it when that happens personally. And now we do have a third and four. So we have a, you know, this could be meaning that your know, drive stalls, but Adrian Allen finds the open soft spot in the zone. And it keeps our drive going as now we move forward on this first and 10. Who takes a quick sack on the very next play as Kyle Luck takes a shot immediately. Doesn't have time to look upfield. And now we got a second and 15 now as Luck. He's looking. He's going to try to throw. Looks like to Andrew Green once again. And now it's third and 15 coming up here, man. Let's see if they come up with. They, the OCs want to go with a screen. As we'll go ahead and do just that. And we actually had some decent blocking, but we just couldn't get up field in time. We are way sore and we got a punt away. But once again, our guys, you know, do what they need to do as we do, you know, get another free and out. So now, about a minute half left in this first half, we still have an opportunity to take the lead here. You know, been definitely a slugfest so far, but we can make something shake and bake here as luck. Dropping back. He's looking. He's going to try to throw deep to Tristan Singleton, but it's broken up by Matt Braddon. And now we're stuck at about the 45-yard line. Just got to make a completion here, which we do. Alex Garcia, who gets back up and picks up a couple more yards after that. Probably was laying on a couple of dudes. Keeps that thing rolling. We'll go ahead and move to no huddle right away as we're looking around. See if we can find somebody. We find... Alex Garcia deep and we get it to him for a huge gain and now we got a goal line situation see if we can get in before the end of this half which we do Santiago found gets into the end zone with ease and it makes it you know a 14 to 10 lead going into halftime and right now things are looking good we might be able to turn things around and get to 7 and 4 on this young season Alright guys, so welcome back to the second half of this game where we actually do get the ball first. So we got a chance early on to make this a two-score game. Maybe take, you know, a commanding presence, you know, in this ball game, man, as we give it to Lucas Coley first. Making some quick work. Quick nine-yard gain on that one. So you know what we got to do. Got to reward our main man, Coley, again, who does pick up an additional few yards. You know, going to go early and often to our running backs at least to start the second half. As we go to Eli, who gets a great spin move off, actually, and picks up five more yards on that play. And what a great way to respond. Was stopped at the line of scrimmage, but it gets a nice spin move off. As now we got a third and five pressure. But Lucas Coley is open. He's going to try to make a couple guys miss, and nearly does. But either way, that's a huge, you know, quick recognition for Kyle Luck to get the ball out quickly. Because he did not have time to throw that ball away. As you know, just moving this ball down the field once again, you know. Just really had a hard time moving it in the first half for the vast majority of the time. But now, you know, it seems like we're really starting to find our stride here. And so is our custom recruit, Eli Shalligan, who picks up another 7 yards on that one. And now first and 10 coming up here. Luck, go try to throw to Coley. Who, I think he should have just thrown it out of bounds at that point. Because, you know, there was not much that Lucas could have done. 
And now it's a third and 16 coming up here. We're going to give it to Kajaye Boyd, who makes a man miss. He makes multiple guys miss, and he's in the end zone. Touchdown, Tommies. And now we have a commanding presence of the, of this game as we now are out here. You know, for, first set of downs, first and 10 coming up here as Joseph Hill has a 14, you know, gains 14 yards on their next possession. So it does feel good to take this two score lead. We haven't, you know, done that very often in this dynasty if you followed this, you know, from episode one. But, you know, now we got this two score lead and now I'm trying to keep it. But we need to get a stop here on defense as they try to throw to Leonard, who Eric Bradshaw lays a hit on as soon as he makes the catch. But the sure hidden receiver does hang on to it. It's a fresh set down for the Rockets as now they're going to go back to their star running back to Marcus Gibbons, who picks up eight on that one. Leaving him with a second and short. And Billy Mitchell is going to try to get up on the line of scrimmage, which could prove fatal as we get beat from behind. And on top of that, we don't even get bailed with the penalty. It was an offsides on Zach Bones, the true freshman. Is now we got second and 13 now. Going back to Gibbons, who finds some quick lanes as Eric Bradshaw can't get off his block in time. Is now it's a 21 to 17 ball game. So now it's the pressure is back on St. Thomas's offense. You know, got to continue to score if we want to keep hanging on to this lead. I have a sneaky feeling that this could turn into a shootout at any given moment. You know, as we give it off to Lucas Coley, he picks up a first down immediately. You definitely love to see that. It's now second and 12 coming up here. Going to try to throw a dart to green, but it's broken up. And now leaves us with a third and long. Big play for us here. Got to make something happen here. Don't want to punt it right back to Toledo. And give him an opportunity to take the lead. As we find Green. And this time he makes the catch. And street <laughs> stretch out forward. For the first down. Keeping this valuable drive alive. As we'll go to Coley again. He picks up another first down. That angle route from the running back. Has been killer. Toledo has not figured out how to stop that yet. So best believe we'll run that some more. As we go to Kyle Luck. He's going to keep it this time around. And that's his first planned carry of this entire game. We haven't gone to him too much. You know, coming back from injury. You know, just letting him get his bearings. But that time he did look good on the run. As he does take a shot in the next possession. As Tristan Singleton, you know, gets hit. But does make the catch for seven. Next play, Kyle Luck going to hand off to Lucas Coley. Who makes a nice cut up field and nearly picks up another first down. Although he does look just a little bit shaken up. At least slow to get back on his feet. So we'll go ahead and give Eli Shalligan some run. Who gets some good running room upfield. And puts us inside the 10 yard line. A, a great you know, lightning and thunder duo that we have you know, here at St. Thomas. As we try to throw it to our guy. But we get hit right away. As we move into the final quarter of play. We're only up 21 to 17. What could happen? On this next drive is going to be huge. Going definitely not going to want to turn it over on these next couple of plays. You know in this fourth quarter. So here we go. Third and goal for the Tommies. Big play coming up here. Let's see if we can get this touchdown. As Coley actually gets stuffed at the line of scrimmage. And can't get any push from his offensive line. So we do settle for a field goal. And now here comes Toledo with an opportunity. You know, to tie this game right up as they're going to give it off to Gibbons here from the jump. Who gets some... I don't know what was going on. We had three Tommies there. And none of them decide to make the tackle. Even did a great job establishing the edge. But now we still see Toledo's offense on the field. Grand, we do get him to a third and 11. Weber's going to go into motion as uh, Joseph Hill about to go and snap the ball for the Toledo Rockets. And it's a screen... Corey Ford is there, Bo, but he can't make the tackle. And for some reason, Demarcus Gibbons runs out of bounds. He had a perfect chance to take that upfield. But I already knew this was coming. They are definitely going to go for it here. Big fourth down coming up. As they call 
Vs just fourth quarter option and Calvin Campbell can't stiff arm his way across the marker and now St. Thomas is back to take over and if we can score on this drive I think this is going to be game over you know I just want to put the dagger in these guys once and for all so we can get a win back on the season as we move to second and three Kyle's going to hand no not going to hand it off he's going to try to get the first down himself and he's successful picking up another first again you know not getting a lot of carries but you know at least is willing to you know put the ball down and run when he needs to you can see on the scramble he doesn't find anybody but also gets out of bounds you know just got to make sure that he's healthy as well you know we do need him for this final stretch of the season for sure as we go over in the middle and find Andrew Green another 13 yard gain on that one another first down for St. Thomas as the, as the Tommies are looking really good right about now as Luck going to try to throw over the middle to Santiago Fountain it's way off target so now we got second and ten coming up here Luck is looking he's going to find Kajaye Boyd who had that huge touchdown run earlier today but this time he only picks up nine and it leaves them with third and short you know if we can get this first down that would be really cool to be able to you know, run this ball upfield as Coley actually gets stopped just short of the marker. We'll be interested to see what they end up doing. And it looks like they do decide to settle for a field goal. You know, I usually like to go for in those fourth and ones, fourth and twos. But it is important to have a two-score lead at this point in the game. Don't want to give these guys any opportunity to come back and time this thing up. It's Justice Hill. He's going to throw the right-hand side. Find Paul Brown and pick up seven yards before moving his troops to the line quickly as they got a third and four coming up here. Very important play for both teams for sure as it looks like they're still waiting on a guy just very lackadaisical and they decide to throw the ball away. They don't even decide to do anything. And now they have a fourth and four. And, you know, if they don't get this, this is not going to look good for the Toledo Rockets as they try to go for the screen. But our entire defensive line sniffs that thing out extremely quickly. They try to fool a fast one on us, but this is not, you know, the St. Thomas teams of the past. This is a very smart defense. And, you know, we were able to pull off this dub, man, G getting back <laughs> off of the snide. It was tough those last few weeks, losing three of our last four games. But I think we're finally on the tra right track, and your final score for this game is going to be 30-17. to What a good win for St. Thomas as we move towards the end of the season. Let's get it started with our quarterback, Kyle Luck, who came back for the first time in at least three and a half games. It's been a minute, but we're happy to have him back, and he's back to his usual self, too. 280 yards, two touchdowns, and a 73% completion percentage. You definitely love to see that, although we didn't run with Kyle as much as we usually do. Uh, we leaned more on Lucas Coley, and he was ready for the challenge, though. 24 carries, 97 yards, and that touchdown on the ground as well. Eli also got a couple of carries, too. He had two for 16. Receivers, you know, Coley, though, also was getting some stuff done with, you know, you know in the passing game. You know, six catches for 43 yards. You know, tied the team in, you know, most catches for today. Yo, know, tied alongside Andrew Green, who had the most receiving yards among everybody was 70. Though he didn't, neither of those guys caught a touchdown. Kajaye Board came for, Boyd came through and got a score. And then same thing could be said for Santiago Fallon, who also found the end zone today as well. You love to see it. And this defense was pretty, you know, you know, spread out today. You know, just because you know we didn't really need to use our defense all of that much. At least that's what it seemed like. Zaire Hill, Jared Odom, and Jeff Outlaw all led the team in tackles today with five each, D doing a good job of coming up and making the tackles whenever they are asked to do so. We also got a couple of sacks on this quarterback as well in OJ Gardner and Dale Garrison. Each of those guys, you know, being able to get into his QB and get that sack. And then we also forced a fumble in Tyro Graham, which we actually should have recovered. Billy Mitchell should have gotten it. But, of course, you know, we uh, we kind of got hoed on that play. I'm not going to lie. But, I mean, you know how it is, man. It is what it is. And we got that dub. So, 
I'm not even worried about it. All right, man. So for the first time in this dynasty, we're going to have some finalists for a couple of these rewards, man. We got somebody for the Forp and somebody for the Begnerick. So I'll definitely need to check that out next episode. As we go into our final regular season game, we are playing UMass, who is looks like they're playing for the opportunity to be bowl eligible themselves. They're five and six on the season, you know, but one of those losses is against an FCS team. Yikes. But, you know, man, I'm excited for it. If we can get to eight wins this season, you know, that, that means that even if we don't become a free start after this upcoming season, we can at least recruit after free star recruits in our pipelines. So that would be good. And then I think we're still in the hunt for the Mac West title as well. You know, it's just been that bad as a division this season. So I'll definitely check that out next episode as well. In the meantime, though, I hope you enjoy the content on this channel. And if you do, I encourage you to hit that like button as well as subscribe if you're new. This is John Jake Gaming on the mic, and I hope you all have a wonderful day. Take care, everybody.